we're having a look at radial surveys here. Uh, and as I've written here, radial survey uses bearings from a central point to calculate angles, lengths, and or areas. So we've got our central point here, as it should be, sitting in the middle. And we measure everything from there, okay? Um, now, you may have seen um, previously an offset survey, which is measured from a common line in the middle. Ends up looking something like this. Now, we're not dealing with that because that's the, that's measured from a central line. We're not measuring from a central line. We're measuring from a central point, okay? So our radial survey is going to measure from this point P in the middle, often O as well. O in mathematics normally means the centre of something. So we've got our point P here, and we're measuring everything from P. Now, uh, we've got, we're going to have, everything's going to be a bearing starting from north, but north is not actually a location here. Okay, north is the direction. Um, if you'd imagine we've got um, uh, some, some groups who are going bushwalking, leaving, everyone's leaving from this point P. Um, one group's walking for 40 minutes on a bearing of 20 degrees, another walks for 44 minutes on a bearing of 87, and so on. Uh, but nobody's actually walked north here. Okay, so north is, north is not a um, location, it just, it's, it's where we measure, um, it's, it's zero for all our angles. So to go and find uh, our angles here, we're going to need to subtract some of our bearings. So if, we're, if I want to go and find this angle here, LPM, well, I, my, my position of L is at 20 degrees and my position of M is 87 degrees. So to go from 20 around to 87, I can find that angle by saying 87 minus 20, which is 57 degrees. Okay, so now I've got a triangle with an angle with an angle at the center there uh, that has these 57 degrees. I've got two lengths in it, so that means all of a sudden I could start doing a sine rule. I could start doing a cosine rule to find the length of L, LM, uh, or I could find the area of triangle LPM as well. All those things are now at play here. Looking at the same thing again, for our next angle, my angle and PM here is going to be, I'm going to find that one by saying uh, 205 minus 87, which is going to be 118 degrees. In my third triangle, KPN, I can do the exact same thing using 300 minus 205 degrees. That's going to be 95. Now, the fourth triangle is a little bit different because I've actually got, uh, I'm separated by uh, by north here, but to do that, I'm actually going to do a couple of subtractions and an addition. So this angle here is going to be 60 degrees by saying 300, sorry, 360, which is a full rotation, minus 300. And then this angle here is going to be 20 degrees, going from zero around to 20 degrees. So that means angle K N, sorry, KPN, is going to be 60 plus 20, which is 80. The other way to do it would be to say, let's take 57, 118, and 95, add those three together, and then take that away from 360, because of course, if I make a full rotation, I've got 360 degrees. A couple of ways you can think about it there, and more than one way to get the job done here. Here we've got an example of a radial survey question. Now we've got four points, P, Q, R, and S, with O in the center. So our first thing we're asked to do here is find the size of angle P, O, Q. It's just that angle there. I'm going to include north as well, only because it's going to be useful for this first part of my question. So to go, to go and find uh, angle P, O, N, well, that's going to be 360 minus 334 which is 26 degrees. That's this part of my angle. And then the second part of my angle, uh, angle N, O, Q, is just my very first bearing, which is 52 degrees. So by adding those two together, angle P, O, Q is equal to 78 degrees, 52 plus 26, 78 degrees. A second thing we're asked to do is hence. Hence means using what you have just done, calculate the length P, Q to the nearest meter. I'm going to get rid of my north there and go and include now 
my triangle here. There's my triangle, of course my angle at the center there is 78 degrees. So I'm going to be using the cosine rule because I've got two sides and one angle involved. And I'm trying to find this length called D. Could just leave it as PQ if you'd like. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say PQ squared equals 24 squared plus, plus 35 squared minus 2 times 24 times 35 cosine of 78. My squares look a little bit funny here. Neaten them up. Um, so that means my value for PQ squared is going to be 1451.70 and so on. We won't round it there because we're going to take the square root of that, which gives me 38. So PQ is 38.101. And we're asked to go to the nearest meter. We'll do as we're told, 38 meters, approximately equal to 38 meters to the nearest hole. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to be able to do there. Using our cosine rule to find that length for part B, which we've done using that angle from part A. Next we're asked to find the size of angle POS, which is actually very straightforward. It's our angle here. And to find the size of angle POS, I don't have to worry about including north this time or, or going and using west or anything like that. I can, but I don't need to. It's just 334 minus 205, which is 129 degrees. And our last thing we're asked to do here for part D is go and find the area of this triangle. So my area is going to be half by 38 by 24 sine 129. which gives me 354.378, which I'm going to round to 354 square meters as I'm asked to there, 354 meters squared to the nearest hole as well. That's a typical type of radial survey question. We can go find lengths, we can go find areas using the angles that we found in the center. It's pretty rare that you need to find an angle using a radial survey. We could do it, but it would mean that a couple of the bearings would have to be missing and you'd need to use a sine or a cosine rule to do that. Possibly an area formula working backwards. But I hope this has been helpful.